What's going on, Key Factor community? It's Sven, and I'm here to do another tutorial with post quantum crypto and creating a hybrid root and sub CA chain with eGBCA. In the latest version that has come out, the 832, we can now create these hybrid certificate chains and issue certs to do testing and interoperability. So let's kick this one off. This is actually a fun one. We'll start off going to the web, the admin web for eGBCA, and you can see that we're on eGBCA 8201. Well, we can't use that to do the hybrid certs, so we need to upgrade our eGBCA. We'll go over to our terminal SSH to our micro K8s host. CD over, actually we'll list, let's see what we got here. We're in the home directory and see the file system we have, so we'll CD over to the K81 directory where we've got our eGBCA override YAML, which we did from some previous tutorials to clean out the micro K8s cluster. But what we need to do is change the line in that to always to upgrade the container, and then we'll do a Helm upgrade, which will download the new container that we changed the policy to always. And we can see that that's pulling down now and redeploying. And we can follow the logs here and watch. And we got the container to eGBCA. And if you want to change that back to not always pull, you can go back and edit that file as well. But now we are all set. We can go to the web UI, click refresh, and oh my goodness, we lost the wonderful menu and we're onto the not so fun menu. We'll go to crypto tokens where we're gonna start here. We're gonna create a new one. We'll call this the PQC hybrid root. It's gonna be soft. We won't do auto activations to root. We'll just do our test password, the foo123, foo123, click save. Then we'll name our keys here, the sign key RSA001. We'll do RSA496, we'll generate the key, create the default RSA001, and generate. We'll create the test RSA key next. And this one only needs to be the 1024 since it's just the test key, generate. And now the fun part, we'll create the dilithium three. So call it the sign key dil 001, go down to the bottom, grab dilithium three, generate new key. Let's go and repeat this process for the sub CA. We'll create the crypto token for PQC hybrid sub soft. We'll do auto activation for this guy. So it restarts to use after EGBCA comes up and down. Foo123, Foo123, save. We'll do the same naming scheme as we did for the root since they're in septo separate crypto tokens. So we'll generate default for the sign, or I'll do the sign, now we'll do the default. And generate, do the test RSA, change that to 1024, and generate RSA 1024. And then the sign key, the dilithium zero zero one and we'll do the dilithium three as well for this generate next up certificate profiles so we'll go create some new certificate profiles we'll clone the root ca and we'll use the wonderful name of pqc root ca 15y we'll edit this guy scroll down right there and we'll make it rsa with 4096 and the SHA-512 with MGF-1, and now the new checkbox for alternative signatures. We check it, select the dilithium-3, and then change our alternative signature to dilithium-3, change our validity down to 15Y. Scroll down a little bit more, we'll uncheck the authority key ID, because I don't see a point putting in a root cert when the chain should stop there. We'll uncheck the issue alternative name, the subject alt names, Keep scrolling down, uncheck the LDAP D in order. We'll click save next. There, move the mouse, good. Now we'll clone the sub CA and we'll call this the PQC sub CA five year. And we'll create from template, we'll edit as well. RSA again and 4096 for the key size. And then we're gonna check the alternative signature. Oop, our hashing algorithm will do SHA-256 with MGF-1 the alternative signature, dilithium three, and then same thing for the hashing algorithm to use the dilithium three, make this five Y for the validity. Scroll down, we're gonna enable the path length constraint ex extension, part of the basic, basic constraints there, so it'll be in that. 
Uncheck the issue alternative name and the subject alt name. We'll enable the serial distribution point to use the CA define one and the same thing for the OCSP URL and the CA issue URL that are in the AI extension. We'll uncheck the LDAP DN order and save. Then we're gonna hop over to certificate authorities. We're gonna create our root CA first. So we'll put in the PQC root RSA CA dash G1. We'll select our new PQC root crypto token. Choose our hashing algorithm for the SHA-512 with MGF-1. And now the new box for the alternative signature. So we'll select our dilithium key, or dilithium three down at the bottom, and it'll find our key there. So that's about the only difference of creating the CA. Put in our CADN. It's gonna be self-signed since it's the root. We'll select our PQC hybrid profile, 15Y for the validity. Uncheck the LDAP DN order. Then we're going to change the CRL validity period to 1Y. So the CRL is issued by the CR good for one year right now. We could issue them sooner too. I mean, it's kind of whatever policies at that point, but we'll go down and just click create. And then we're gonna pop open two new tabs, but we're gonna copy this URL from the EGBCA part over. There we go. Paste that in the tab. We're gonna go to forward slash public web CRLs. And this is the CRL cache where I like to tell all our customers to pull CRLs from if they're pulling from EGBCA. So we'll right click on the subject key ID hash, copy the link, go back over to the admin web, select our new hybrid root CA. We'll click edit, scroll down to the default serial distribution point and paste that value. We'll go all the way to the left, remove the S. So we're going over HTTP for it. And then we're gonna pop open another tab now to grab Oh, and quick note, if you're going to change this to be in some other EGBCA or have it where it's dynamic down the road, if you were to upgrade to enterprise and go to an external validation authority, you could put a name like CRL dot whatever your domain is. That way, once you move it from the CA, you could move this over to a VA and not have any big problems with getting revocation at that point. So just keep that in mind. But we're just gonna keep it pointed to the container for now. So let's grab the other URL for the CA issuer. So we'll copy this part from the public web over, open another tab, paste that, and we're just gonna go to forward slash certificates and find our hybrid root and the SKID hash. And we'll right click on that and do copy link. And go back to the admin web. We're gonna paste that in the default CA issuer and scroll over to the left and remove the S. So it's just HTTP. We're not gonna set OCSP since it's a root. We'll do save. And now we're ready to create the PQC sub CA. So we'll do PQC sub CA RS, or sub RSA CA dash G1, select our hybrid sub CA token here, SHA 256 with the MGF1, and then dilithium three to pick up our key. Scroll down to put in our CADN. And this time it'll be signed by our hybrid root. And we'll select our hybrid profile we just created for the cert profile, 5Y for the validity. Scroll down to uncheck the LDAP DN order. And we'll make the CRLs good for three days here with a pre-update of one day. That way we'll issue CRLs every day. And if anything breaks, we got a 48 hour buffer to get it back online. And then we can go down and click create. And we'll then refresh the two other tabs we have for the CRLs, refresh this. So now we can grab the URL there and the same thing for certificates. We'll go back to the CRL tab and we'll right click and get the SKID hash for our sub CAs. Right click and copy link. Go back to the admin web. We'll select our new PQC sub CA, click the, to select it, edit, scroll down to the default CRL distribution point, paste it, scroll over to the left, pull off the S. Go back to the third tab for the CA certificates, right click and copy the SKID hash for this. Copy link. We can paste that in the bottom one there and then take off the S. And then we'll put in the OCSP URL, which points to it. And then we'll save. Now we can go and create another certificate profile to issue a test certificate that's hybrid. So we'll clone the RTLS server profile. We'll call this guy the PQC TLS server and we'll make it good for 90 days. RSA 
lithium three in the name too, so we know what the algorithms are quickly. We'll edit. And now we need to change this to RSA since that's the old traditional key and we'll make it 20, 48 through 40, 96. We'll do the SHA-256 with MGF-1. And now we have the same box here for the alternative signature. So we'll check that box and then select the lithium three, select the lithium three for the alt sig algorithm, make this 90D. We'll scroll down, see if we want to change anything. Nope, not yet. We could uncheck the key encipherment at that point if we're going to do TLS 1.3 or later because we don't actually need the key encipherment bit, I believe, anymore. But we'll leave it checked for backwards compatibility for TLS 1.2. We'll leave that checked. We'll leave the CRL and AIA stuff set up to pull from the CA since we configured it. And then we're going to change this to the PQC sub CA now. We'll save. Let's go and create an end entity profile that we can use to now issue this. We'll clone our TLS server profile, so we'll select it and just type the PQC TLS server clone, select our PQC TLS server edit. And then in here, we're just gonna scroll down and change the certificate profile to our new 90 day PQC hybrid and the same thing for the available one. And then we'll set the default CA to our PQC sub CA and make that the only CA that could issue it to in the bottom list. Then we can go down and save. Now that that's issued, we can pop open RA web and issue our post quantum cert. So we'll select the PQC server. We'll do by the CA, just go with the default 2048. We'll paste in PQC dash server TLS dot test, paste in for the username two. We'll do foo one, two, three and foo one, two, three for our password. And we're going to scroll down and download PEM. And now we can hop over to the terminal window. So we'll get another window open in the terminal and we'll CD over to our downloads directory where that cert is so we can parse it with OpenSSL. So use OpenSSL to parse the cert. We can scroll up towards the top and see that it has all the same fields we've been using for all these years before. But now down below, we've got two new fields where we've got the alternative signature algorithm and the alternative signature right there. And that is how quick and easy it can be to set up EGBCA now to issue or create the hybrid CA chain issue certs. And you could go back and make some more at that point and play with more issuance and start testing it. You could throw this on a web server at that point and test. And since it's hybrid, it won't even see or use the hybrid parts, but if you have some other stuff that could play with that, you could do that too. So it's up to you to go and start playing with it and have a great time with it. All right, guys, we'll catch you in the next tutorial. Take care.